have from the South Center. Here we go. Thank you, Theo, and thank you for the invitation to the side event. Um, I think we've had two very good presentations, one with exact uh, examples of what could be some of the implications in terms of access for consumers um, of the, at least the working document um, from the 27th session. Um, and then I think we've had a good overview as well, generally, um, about some of the issues of relationship of copyright holders uh, together with, um, with the new rights that could come for broadcasters as, as we're not clear how they would define. So what I would like to do basically is just um, perhaps take a, a bit of a, of a broader view, broader questions in the sense to try to complement and not repeat what's been said before. Um, so um, one thing that uh, I think has already been highlighted but I think is important as a global question is again, um, why is it that after all these sessions we've had, um, 10 years plus of this discussion, we still are not agreeing on the problem um, that we are addressing with this treaty? And I think that's a fundamental issue, um, is that we're not understanding correctly or that we do understand what the broadcaster wants, but we're not necessarily willing um, to do that from a public policy perspective in an international organization that is also a UN entity and is also um, charged with other um, obligations beyond protecting IPRs. So I think we should openly just have that um, discussion versus um, narrowly focusing perhaps on, on content before and um, we keep on giving circles to the same question. So my view on that again is that we've defined um, in a General Assembly decision that we're discussing signal piracy but we're not convinced um, that that is actually what is um, the problem that at least broadcasters are asking to address and whether member states are agreeing whether that's the scope or not. Um, so again, the issue with signal piracy, I think it's less of, a, of, a, of understanding what it means. Um, I think we, we do know that language, but it's more whether um, there is still, um, there's still a pressure to extend that um, to rights that would go beyond only protecting signal piracy. Um, so that's a first challenge. Um, I think where the, the whole discussion for the broadcasting treaty is caught up with is that really what we're dealing with is the challenges of a certain type of organization in the face of the context of a changing technological environment. And really what we're saying is, well, we, we look at a tradi traditional type of broadcasters, um, we're considering in particular over-the-air transmissions, and we're seeing whether um, in the current environment um, they're facing new challenges based on new competition, for example, internet companies, or as well as the expanding um, role of cable uh, TV, for example, in, in the delivery systems. Um, so that is really the question. Now, um, what we should address as part of the problem is what is WIPO's role then in this area? Now, we know that this is something that nationally countries are still addressing and, and coping in different ways. There hasn't been single solutions, perhaps from the IP aspect, that's one, one area where we're looking at, but um, it's not clear to the extent that um, this is necessarily the right approach at the national level. So um, I think from, from the perspective of South Center, we're still not convinced that international solution um, is, is, is what we should be looking for with this treaty when we're not clear what's the problem and national um, experiences or regional experiences for, for example, the case of you, have not shown the sufficient evidence that this is, this is what we need um, to do at the international level. Um, in terms of why particularly for the IPR approach is problematic, I think this has already been highlighted before, um, but um, the issue again is that we have additional competition, which we should see as, as a positive approach in the changed digital environment. Um, IPR per se would be in the context of putting restrictions to these market dynamics. Now, do we want to do that? Um, of course, from a right holder perspective, it's understandable that um, this is what they are asking for. Now, as WIPO, we are discussing in an IGO, which as I mentioned before, also plays a role in um, ensuring access to digital technologies, for example, also access to um, information and entertainment to the public, and this is part of WIPO's role in relation also to the implementation of the World Summit of Information Society. Um, as you know, WIPO also reports as part of the UN on their efforts to contribute to these objectives. Speak slower. The oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we had interpretation. Um, yes, so um, what I wanted to mention in terms of WIPO role, to say that again, was to say we have, I believe we're focusing in their discussion on broadcasting treaty on the protection of right holders and trying to define the extent of, of uh, what is the, the needs of, of this type of right holder, which we're still defining. 
But um, this is encapsulated in a broader discussion about what is it that WIPO is um, supposed to give solutions to. And I think that since we are discussing elements that refer to also access to, um, to information, access to knowledge, um, entertainment, um, and in relation to the digital environment, then it has broader consequences that WIPO member states, member states must consider um, as part of the same exercise. Now, um, in terms of going back to national experiences, we see, as, as I was mentioning, that there has been a lot of diversity. And I think this is the same thing in what's happening with the competitive um, marketplace. Um, in, in developing countries, perhaps we can see that there is a different situation um, in extent to what has happened in, in Europe or in the United States. Um, and this is where I mean that it would be difficult to see why, for example, are we, or how are we selecting, which is the kind of beneficiary that we have for this treaty, in particular if we extend that to an IPR um, exclusive rights or a right to authorize approach. Um, and, and, and I mean, for example, the fact that uh, traditional broadcasting um, in developing countries still continues to be one of the key means that people access um, either entertainment or, um, or information in general versus perhaps cable services and others. Um, but there's increasing um, potential for the use of internet as a means um, and also gathering information beyond, um, beyond the, the national barriers. Um, so that perhaps is a unique circumstance and we don't see it reflected um, adequately in the discussions for a broadcasting treaty. Now another point um, which has also perhaps been mentioned worth, worth noting again is the relationship with the, um, with the copyright holders um, and that the most important relationship really is between um, the copyright holder and then the broadcasting which is um, simply that copyright holders, which is what we um, mean to protect in principle, um, have difficulties in making their works available so the role is complementary of the broadcaster to assist in such broadcasting. However, this is not the same for all means. And for example, if we want to um, have copyright content through the internet, perhaps copyright holders already have a means to do that directly. So they don't have that same dependency as they might have with other um, forms of broadcasting, as for example, um, over the air broadcasting. Um, and that is another element that is worth um, discussing when we talk about what it means to expand um, rights that would include over any medium or computer networks. Um, finally, I think um, another point that I just wanted to highlight is, again, that um, this is really a dynamic environment and the overall discussion about WIPO and its role in addressing issues of the digital environment hasn't, had, hasn't been um, done in a more broad aspect and I think that perhaps is one of the reasons why we're still um, having this micro discussion and going around some of the larger international public policy questions. On the last point, um, just on evidence, which I think was mentioned before, um, this is what uh, we keep on saying in many elements that we need to do in WIPO to have informed decision making. And this is one area where the evidence just does not seem to be clear enough to, to tell us um, how we should um, be moving forward. Um, for example, we, when we have concerns um, about the scope of the implications of this treaty together with um, the implications of rights for other copyright holders, there is an Article 1 in relation to other conventions and treaties in the working text, the SCCR 27-2-rev, um, um, that protection, will, protection in the treaty will leave intact and in no way, in no way affect the protection of copyright or related right and subject matter carried by broadcast singles. Now, that is more of a general principle. Um, and we would need to translate this to see how this would actually work in practice when then we're including all the forms of exclusive rights that have been men mentioned um, furthermore in this working text. Um, so in conclusion, um, from the perspective of South Center as international organization of developing countries, we think that there's still an, a need to broaden the, the discussion of the broadcasting treaty in a, in, a, in a larger discussion about the role of WIPO in um, different issues um, related to, um, on the one hand, what's happening in the market um, for, um, for broadcasting in general for communication, and also about WIPO's role um, in the new digital environment in ensuring also guaranteeing access to information and access to knowledge. Thank you.